Hi, Edgar. Hi. This is Melissa Ho interviewing Hockey Ivy Edgar Heap of Birds on August 12th, 2020 for the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Art Pandemic Project. And Edgar is speaking to me from his home in Oklahoma City near the Cheyenne Arapaho Reservation. Edgar, yeah. hi. Um, hi. Thanks so much for making time for this. Uh, there, I thought I'd start because you had suggested two works of yours in particular um, to bring to our attention in, in preparation for this conversation, Places of Healing and Health of the People is the Highest Law. Uh, those are both um, installations of, of monoprints. So could you tell me a little about these works and, and how they're resonating now during this current crisis of, of pandemic? Well, they become very appropriate in, in an odd way because of the disaster and crisis of health in, in the world. But uh, uh, interestingly enough, they were made far ahead of the crisis coming. And, and that sort of speaks to Native American racist uh, existence here in the country, whereas Native people have a health crisis every day, and, they, and they've had it since the contact since Columbus came. You know, there were ma major uh, diseases spread <clears throat> from the Europeans, and then it, it continued on to uh, to uh, also bad health, food. Uh, even the cavalry gave bad food to the Native people as part of their rations, and so there's been a health uh, pandemic, in a sense, with Native people across this country uh, for hundreds of years, and and they're still suffering. And then there's now there's a uh, Indian Health Service, which is a governmental uh, body that is supposed to heal the Indians on the reservations, which is very poor. Um, so the first piece, uh, Health People's Highest Law, dealt with the Indian Health Service and, and diabetes and hypertension and heart disease and all these things that I found in my own family, you know, my own reservation area. And I wanted to comment about that. And then the second piece, uh, Places of Healing, uh, deals with how Native people actually uh, struggle to resolve these health issues, and much of it is done with traditional healing. So there are ceremonial sites throughout the country, even Alaska, Hawaii, across South America, and there are ceremonial sites where people go to heal themselves with the tribe, fast, uh, make prayers, and so I made a, a kind of a login of all these, of many of these ceremonial sites where I go uh, to myself as a Cheyenne um, medicine person too. So, so anyway, those two projects were actually created before the, the COVID pandemic, and, and now they seem appropriate, I guess, for people to look at those. And how have things changed for you in the last several months? Um, how, well, we, how are you, yeah. We've been, we've been more isolated. Um, the tribal uh, government has, has been really instrumental in keeping people isolated in a sense where there's not, sadly enough, there's not as many social gatherings, which are very important, you know, communal gatherings for uh, Native people, tribal people to get together. And uh, the drum, the songs, and the dances, and those kinds of things haven't been occurring, which has been very difficult. Um, to kind of carry on without the community uh, moving together. And we just completed the earth renewal ceremony, which renews the whole earth. Uh, and we did that about two weeks ago. So I'm an instructor in the ceremony. And so uh, many of the participants, uh, and they probably all were tested for COVID, you know, to, to enter into the lodge. And, and we share a lot of things, touching and closeness and and uh, it turned out very, very good. You know, it was a very good kind of cooperative exchange. So, so the tribe actually made a way to make that, uh, to expedite that ceremony. And it was kind of odd to have infringement of, of the rest of the world in our ceremony, which is usually very isolated. But because of the disease, we had to, uh, you know, inter interject health services to come in and, and do testing before we started the ceremony. But we finished and everyone seems very healthy and and it's, it's a good way in a sense as i said with a piece called a place of healing uh, it's called concho it's a site where the shine arapaho come to make the ceremony every year uh and so we were able to complete that and and make the prayers for the whole world you know 
Yeah, it it's, seems like this, um, this situation of dealing with the public health crisis and um, sort of confronting the fragility of, of life and also confronting loss is, of course, something that indigenous communities have been dealing with for a long, long time. Do, do you see the, you know, now that it's confronting the entire United States of America more broadly, I mean, do you see that changing your your work going into the, the future? Uh, not, not really. I, I think it's kind of ironic or I don't say, I don't want to say it's humorous, but but you know to to have empathy and to care for your people and to care for the earth and to care for health that's sort of a new idea in america it seems to be yeah. you know and it's just ridiculous that it is a new idea like like we should not you know the, the, the republic of america the republic the capital behind the republic is about solo wealth you know that's what it's all about basically and how can the solo individual become wealthy and prosperous and, and all that? And it's not about a community or, or, or a, a, you know, a tribe or a region. It's more about the individual. And, uh, and so the tribe uh, is totally about the community. And even, and even in the leadership, I, I, I remark that to be a chief, there's 44 chiefs. And to be a chief in the Cheyenne tribe, you have to give all your, your belongings away. Or if someone wants anything from you, you give it to them. But you lead with generosity. And if someone ever has a meal, a communal meal, you eat last. If you're the chief, you eat last. You hope there's something left for you to eat yeah. because they've been to save you something because you eat last. You don't eat first. You eat the last person to eat. They wait in the, in the back of the area and then they go forward and at the end. So all these things, the apparatus of, of leadership is based on humility and community and sharing and, and that kind of attitude. So we've, we've been living that way for, you know, thousands of years. And, and now, you know, America still wrestles with, again, obviously, how do they resolve this crisis by actually giving in to helping everybody without it being an individual, like the mask issue, do I wear a mask? And the individual doesn't want to wear a mask. Like, again, the individual wants to rule and you can't, you can't change that by the individual. So, so those two pieces of work I made deal with community, deal with uh, you know sharing and and, and uh, empathy. But but it's not a, it's an old idea, and and we we will continue living that way, and I'll continue working that way. And the both of those works that um, we are referencing were were created by uh, what I think is called viscosity printing. Yes. Yes. Um, and. Uh, there's these two sort of sets and the set that you call the, the, the ghost prints. Could you talk more about that, that ghost aspect of those prints? Yes, yes that's a good point. Yeah, I, cre I create the, these projects in Santa Fe and I work at Fourth Dimension Studios and it's a native operated studio, uh, a Navajo printer, master printer, Michael McCabe. We worked together for like 20 years, over 20 years. But we, we create those pieces out there. I make my drawings in Oklahoma. I go to Santa Fe. And we make primary prints, which are the full inking of the plate, you know, one, one pull off of there, off the plate. And then we have one, so we have one set that's primary, that's uh, the full kind of inking. Then we have a second pull, which is called the first ghost. And that is a little fainter, a little, a little lighter, uh, and now we've been doing that on a different color paper to kind of change up the, the, the presentation of, of the, and they're, and they're words, they're texts, you know, pieces. Uh, so in my sensibility, uh, primary print is the way Native people live and exist. You know, we, we're, we're very vivid, we're very much in, in focus, we're, you know, we're, we're solid. Uh, the, the ghost print is how America sees Native people, faintly a ghost image, just barely existing, you know, uh, lighter and in, in, in focus and so on. And so I always make two separate uh, panels that way. So one is one is the real one in a sense, and one's the the sort of the the, the remnant of, of what what exists. And so I, I challenge America to to not fixate on the ghost, but to fixate on the reality of Native America. Um. What are, um, what are, oh, 
Sorry, something strange happened with my audio though for a second. Can you still hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, uh, this the sense of sort of addressing um, maybe two different audiences at once, a, a, a native and a non-native. I'd like to ask you more about um, what are the, the 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 lessons and the ideas you think are more most urgent for for both of those audiences to to be hearing through your through your work or just in conversation now. Well, with, with my work, uh, it, it kind of has two major kind of uh, channels. Uh, one. Uh, began in the 80s and that was me moving to the reservation and living there uh, kind of in a rural area and learning about the land and being very much uh, a student of the land and uh, and I made paintings then uh, abstract paintings they're called the Nuf series mm -hmm. and so that was about sovereignty that's my sovereignty in the sense my location on the reservation where I lived about for 12 years uh, and during that time though I, I became even more politicized and I made more text work, which were declarations of uh, kind of uh, uh, combative declarations, uh, insurgencies within within America to defend native native land and native peoples' uh, lives. And so I have two things happening at the same time, and one is more celebratory, and one is more combative or informative. Uh, so I think it's very important to use the words to actually be very very outspoken and very clear. To the to the public, the non-native public, about the priorities of native life, how to defend it, how do we should interject policy, health, you know, all these things, jobs, all these things that happen, sovereignty, with gaming as a, as an example, you know, that kind of independence of, of sovereignty. So I continue to work that way, and I, I think native artists should do that. I think. Uh, a piece I did also for the cover of Art in America a couple years ago said, do not dance for pay, do not dance for pay. And uh, it was a red monoprint. And so I really call out all the native artists in a sense to not to quit dancing for pay. Like we, we've been doing so much native art for commerce in the market and to please the white man. And so most of the white people think everything's fine because we have very pastoral, like buffaloes or coyotes or something, all these images of just, you know, kind of grand Western life, you know. And we have, but underneath that, we've got poverty, alcoholism, hypertension, diabetes, uh, you know, huge, huge problems. But no one paints about that. They sort of dance for the pleasure of the white man uh, to make money. And much, most of Native art in the, in the country is built on a commerce for the white man, like Sedona, Santa Fe, you know, those kind of places. Um, so we need to change that and be more outspoken about the reality. So I challenge everyone to step forward and as, as native artists and really uh, explain and share the difficulties and try to resolve these problems. There's a, another way in which um, your work, Places of Healing, is outspoken is in the, the use of native languages. Um, talk about how you deploy uh, native sovereign language in, in your, you know, you do so much text-based work, as you say. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good point. And so with this piece, there's 24 primary prints and 24 ghosts, um, so that most of the text is actually in the tribal language that we're, we're uh, you know, examining in terms of their ceremonial location. So I think it's, that's another step, certainly, is to use your own language, you know, uh, tribal languages. That's a very, very strong sense of sovereignty to be speaking your own language and writing your own language. And so that's how I handle most of those prints. Some of them are in English to kind of key in to the, the viewer can sort of see that, you know, some, some location might be uh, more easier to understand and they know all of them are all ceremonial places. But, but yeah, using native language is very key and then to preserve it, learn it, uh, and that's how really the change goes forward. The main challenge is to go back to your tribal community and learn from the elders, you know, learn to help the elders preserve your tribal identity and not to just make art about it. You know, that's ridiculous. You need to go back and preserve it. Otherwise, it won't be there as a subject matter anymore. You know, you have to go back and pay your dues and spend your time and really be with the tribal people. So I think language is one of the main ways to do that. I'd like to ask you a bit more about that process at this moment, because that, as we opened our um, this interview, I mean, you were talking about some of the challenges during 
uh, the pandemic for people just to physically be together and to um, to uh, be functioning as a as a community. Can you talk more about in in your community how? I mean, it's very interesting to hear about. Um, the way COVID testing was folded into sort of a, a ceremonial pro process so that could happen. Is there, is how, how are the elders and how is the community at large sort of um, adapt, adapting to the situation? Well, a good example is my, my wife, uh, I'm married to uh, Shanna Ketchum People Birds and she's Navajo uh, travel member from Arizona. And so I, I'm familiar with the Navajo Nation. I, I travel there as well, and uh, in Arizona, Northern Arizona, and there they actually were very had to be very very strict and actually closed down the reservation for travel uh, after certain hours and and, and uh, suspend certain store hours. And, and uh, it, although it's very rural, uh, the people didn't get much news, television, and all these contemporary technologies. So they had to be alerted to the to the dangers. And so having the restrictions of uh, travel and the weekends were off limits for moving around for, for their own, probably their own ceremonial things and so forth. Uh, so that was very restrictive and wearing the mask. And, and so the, the, the president of the Navajo Nation was very, very strong in his, in his efforts to, uh, to kind of seclude, to make them, make them secluded in a sense or isolated to, for their health. And they actually turned it all around by doing those efforts, you know, uh, better than America has. Uh, they've actually come together, joined together to, to preserve their own health. And, and that's what's necessary. And that's what happens with, with a good community, a good tribe, they work together. You know? If I could, you know, turn my line of questioning to sort of you more um, personally, how, uh, how have you been caring for yourself and, and your family um, uh, during these months? Well, we, we've been, uh, you know, of course, school was, I have a daughter who's 11, so we, mm -hmm. the school was suspended back in the spring. Uh, travel is, is limited. I don't travel anymore. I used to fly probably twice a month. You know, I, I don't travel like that anymore. And we travel together as a family a lot as well, you know, um, and we don't, we don't do that. We drive. I went, I went and printed. I made a new piece in Santa Fe, but we drove and you know, we stayed in, in a, in a, in a place that was uh, secluded and so on and work with a team of just two people. Uh, um, and we were all tested, you know, as well. So, so uh, I've been, I've been able to kind of continue working, uh, but uh, I've been more, more secluded with my life and, uh, and everyone is healthy here and uh, we were, we've been tested before. And, uh, but, but it's difficult. It's very difficult to, to kind of sustain this sort of isolated lifestyle. As you know, you probably have a similar, similar challenges yourself, you know. So, so uh, we're looking forward to this changing, but I think we need to really work together in the, in the nation uh, to do so. And then making art about these issues are very, is very important kind of uh, contribution to make. And, uh, and so I, I felt strongly to go forward and do that. But, but I, yeah, we're doing fine, but it's just a very, very tough time to be so secluded. But having the ceremony go forward is, is, was a wonderful, wonderful blessing. And and that made us all feel much better. And it was so great to see everybody and to heal. I have a young, young dancer I'm working with. He's about 35 and I'm, I'm, I'm working with his family, you know, his grandmothers and all those people. So I'm, I'm the leader of that, of that group to kind of go forward. And for four years, he'll be working with me. Uh, and so we didn't let this pandemic stop us. We went forward and, and tried to, you know, make our contributions. That's great. Um, maybe just one last question. Um, what do you think you'll remember most vividly from this, from 2020? Um, well, probably just that kind of limitation of your movements and, and what matters, you know, your family, uh, the things in your community, and they, they may become more acute, you know, as to what matters when they take away the other things. And so certainly your family is the key uh, part of your life and, and uh, to protect everybody. <clears throat> which is not too much far away from how we live anyway, but uh, but I think that's that's what I've learned about this. It's, it's what really matters, and it's not so much the big institutions and all these things. That I'm very involved with all these museums and galleries and projects and so on. So, but and I still maintain, you know, my work. But uh, but I think the family and the land and the life uh, 
I've been riding my bike. I'm, I'm, I'm a gearhead guy, so I, I ride my, my push bike. And so that's really helped me a lot to be out on this lake every day riding the six miles and, and coming back home, you know. So, so just slowing down and maybe paying more attention to, to what's going on with this planet. Thank you, Edgar. Um, can I just ask, this is a, not a significant question really, but what, what's a push bike? Is that a, a different oh, format of bike? Well, that's sort of British thing, but our, people say bike and they think you, they think you mean a motorcycle. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> this is a, a, pedal, a pedaling, a pedaling, a pedaling bike. bike. I don't ride a motorcycle around like for exercise. No. <laughs> gotcha. <Yeah. laughs> I've been there for 20 years. I, it's my thing to, to ride the bike. And it's a place called Lake Hefner near me and I've been living here for 20 years. So it's really great to be out and, and the, in the, in, in the wind and the sun and, and uh, enjoying that. Yeah, being outdoors is a huge solve at this point. Um, yeah. Cities aren't good for that. So yeah, I'm glad it's true. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Well, um, it's great to talk to you. Is there anything um, else that you'd like to, to state for the record? Um, well, I wonder how you're doing with all this. How are you managing? Well, like you say, um, I, I have a... I have a child who's school age too, so I think um, you know I am seeing it a lot through his eyes, um, and I'm wondering how he's going to remember this time. Um, and there is this contraction into the the family home and spending time together. Um, at the same time, work has been very intense um, and feeling very very tethered to my computer, not yeah. always. Uh, happily so, um, but, <laughs> but I think this is, you know, us talking like this on the screen, this is, this is the new, a new normal for me because I, I never really did that um, before. But now this is, you know, one of the main ways I have to communicate certainly with, you know, a lot of colleagues and friends. Um, and so, yeah, it, I, it, it makes me all the more appreciative of the things I can do in person, but it's all very localized, just sort of my neighborhood. Um, so I, there is a commonality of experience um, that's happening right now. Uh, in, although, you know, I'm, I'm curious because of course I'm, I'm in the Washington DC area um, with certain um, you know, most of the people uh, here in my neighborhood are, are pretty conscientious about wearing masks and so forth. And I've, I've talked to people in other parts of the country where it's really contested. Um, so, yeah, but I'm not going out too much, maybe like you. It's good to hear you're still managing to make work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a challenge. I guess it's my last comment. It's just to reflect on, you know, certainly Black Lives Matter and all the yes. kind of equity issues that we have along with COVID. And, and like with any kind of crisis, with any kind of challenge, you know, you, you hope that people maintain the priorities when it all goes back to, to whatever normal used to be. Like, you know, we, we need to have the, the kind of, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the, the Washington Redskins team changing their name, all these things that happen that we've that we been working so hard for that for 20, 30 years, I, I've been involved, and to see it happen so quickly, what is great, you know, and all the things are great to have equity, sensitivity, you know, racial kind of inclusion, all these things are wonderful, and we hope, uh, and, and, the, and the, the, the vice president uh, candidate selected yesterday, tremendous, tremendous, I'm so excited about that all that wonderful and just let's just keep it all moving in that direction let's keep it to where we're all going to be fair and and, and empathy is the word. i think that's we need to carry that forward agreed well thanks edgar i'm going to stop recording thank you so much for making time for this sure great